On Saturday, in South Dakota, security guards working for the Dakota—in uh, North Dakota, security guards working for the Dakota Access Pipeline Company attacked Native Americans with dogs and pepper spray as they resisted the $3.8 billion pipeline's construction. If completed, the Dakota Access Pipeline would carry about 500,000 barrels of crude per day from North Dakota's Bakken oil field to Illinois, where it would meet up with an existing pipeline that would carry the oil all the way down to Texas. The pipelines face months of resistance from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and members of nearly 100 more tribes from across the U.S. and Canada. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has also sued the U.S. government over the pipeline's construction. On Friday, lawyers for the tribe filed documents showing how the very land where Dakota Access would bulldoze Saturday was, in fact, a tribal burial site. On Sunday, more than 500 people marched back to the construction site and held a prayer mourning the destruction of their ancestors' graves. Today, a federal judge in Washington, D.C., will decide whether to grant a temporary restraining order prohibiting further construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline in the area near the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation, until the same judge rules on an injunction in the tribe's lawsuit against the U.S. government, which is expected by Friday. Well, Democracy Now! was on the ground Saturday. We bring you this exclusive report. Criminals! You guys are criminals! Go well, get your money somewhere else! We're standing at the construction site of the Dakota Access Pipeline. It looks like there are at least three bulldozers that are, to people's surprise at this moment, uh, actually bulldozing the land. There's a helicopter above, there's security here, and hundreds of people have been marching up when they heard that the construction site is actually active right now. My name is Jacob, Jacob Johns. And where are you from? I'm from Spokane, Washington. I'm hoping I don't come out there. And can you describe what you see, what they're doing? They are they're bulldozing. They're bulldozing and preparing to put it, install a pipeline to go into the Ethan River. And above, we see a helicopter. The helicopter itself has been following us and taking pictures. And um, we're filming them in return. Come on, guys! Come here. We gotta stop this! are still going, and they're yelling at the men in hard hats. One man in hard hat threw one of the protesters down, and they're marching over the dirt mounds. Some of the security have dogs. The six bulldozers are pulling back right now. People are marching forward in their tracks. There are men, women, and children. More security trucks are pulling up. There are some protesters on horseback. Hundreds of people are coming from the main camp. They're climbing up the tracks left by the bulldozers, six at least, I've counted, that are now receding. Protesters advance as far as a small wooden bridge. Security unleashes one of the dogs, which attacks two of the Native Americans' horses. Security has some kind of gas. People are being pepper sprayed. From New York, what are you spraying people with? I haven't sprayed anything, man. But what is that? Yeah, he just makes me in the face right now. Amy Goodman, this guy makes me in the face. Can you show us the label? Look, it, it's all over my sunglasses. He just makes me in the face. Dog bit him right now. Throw the dog on me. This throw the dog on me. Look at this. Look at this. Let me, let me say. Throw the dog on me. No, you did it on purpose, man. Over there, with that dog. 
I was like walking through the dog on me straight, even without any warning, you know? Look at this, look at this. The dog, yeah, the dog did it, you know? Look at this. Yeah, the dog did it. Man, your dog just bit that protester. Your dog just bit that protester. Are you telling the dogs to bite the protester? The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. And she's still standing here threatening. You can't put your blood on the dog, you're an evil woman. You can't put your blood on the dog. These people are just threatening all of us with them, these dogs. And she, that woman over there, she was charging them and it bit somebody right in the face. And then it charged at me and tried to bite me. And she's still, they're still threatening oh, these dogs against us. And we're not doing anything. Why are you letting their her dog go after the protesters? It's covered in blood. One of the pipeline security men unleashes a dog into the crowd. Protesters respond using a flagpole and sticks to fend off the dog attacks. Protesters said that the dog was bloody from biting them. They then pulled the dogs away, and now pickup truck by pickup truck is pulling away. We'll see what happens. The protesters are moving in to ensure that the security leaves. Let's go check on this woman. What happened? I just saw a lot of maize, and the sweat was run, uh, uh, dripping it, and it was the sweat was making it run down into my eyes. I had my glasses on, and that spared me the brunt of it, but then the sweat started putting it in. How are you doing? I'm great. What's your name? Raina Crow. And what do you think you've accomplished today? I hope we've accomplished letting Enbridge know that the people of this nation and the people of this world, tribal or otherwise, have withdrawn their social license to pollute water and that they need to find an honest, nonviolent way to make a living. Where are you from? Duluth, Minnesota. I don't know more Duluth. I got maced twice. I got bit by a dog. I was the front line. I was Where did you get bit? I got bit on the ankle over my booties. So I told them they needed to leave, but the, the guy didn't believe me. So he didn't want to listen. He uh, stuck his hand out and he, he maced me. Uh, this other guy, and I think he maced a, a lady too. Then. They, they, they tried getting the dogs on us, so I was, I was just standing there, I wasn't really doing nothing. That dog ran up on me and it bit my, around my ankle. You pushed them back, though? Yes. Why is this such an important fight to you? Because water is life. Like I said, without water, we'd all, we wouldn't be here. These, these plants wouldn't be here. There'd be no oxygen. We all die without it. I, I wish they'd open their eyes and have a heart to realize, you know, if this happens, we're not going to be the only ones going to suffer. They're going to suffer, too. What tribe are you with? I'm Oglala Sioux, Food Blood. From? Pine Ridge Reservation. What's your name and where are you from? Linda Lee Bruner. I'm from Belcourt, North Dakota. I've traveled from Wichita, Kansas. I stand for my grandchildren, my next grandchildren. I already got great grandchildren that are in the future. I know the 18 year old and 19 year olds that are getting ready to come here, they'll fight to the end. We're going to stay here just like in 1836. We're going to go down and wait and wait. This oil ain't going to go through. We should all walk out together. That's a good idea. Whoever said that. I am Elvia Ramirez. I come from Arizona, Salt River. I'm in Pima Maricopa tribe. How old are you? I am 13 years old. And why are you out here today? I am with my family because I believe I right hear what they're doing is wrong. This is very wrong. They should protect the water. Everybody needs water to live. Water is in us, no matter what. What about the oil? The oil should stay in the ground. They should just leave it because they're hurting Mother Nature. Mother Nature is important because without Mother Nature, we wouldn't be here. No one owns this land. This land belongs to the earth. 
We are only caretakers. We're caretakers of the earth. Oh. Do you feel like you won today? We win every day when we stand in unity. We stand and we fight. My name is Candy Mossett with the Indigenous Environments Network. Is this where the DAPL is being built? Yes, this is the pipe that is leading up to the river. So what we're waiting for, or what Dakota Access is waiting for, is the easement to go underneath and bore under the water. My understanding was that with the TRO, they were supposed to completely quit construction, but I guess in the oil and gas industry, that's there not were the way There were temporary restraining order. Right. Well, the te there was a restraining order, and they were supposed to, I thought, we all thought, stop construction completely, but they've been coming from the West over here ever, this whole time, these past three weeks, ever since you saw the first demonstrations, and obviously now this is how close they are right across the road from where we've been barricading. So they're continuing to lay pipe up to the point of where they're waiting for the easement to go underneath where they're going to bore. So people are like, why are we going to wait for that? We're not. We're going to go out and we're going to stop the pipeline. We're going to stop it where it is. And that's what effectively has been happening the past few days in nonviolent direct action. How do you feel? I feel great. What did you accomplish today? We were well, protecting the water. water. That's what we were here to do, and that's what we did. Where are your horses from? Crow Creek, South Dakota. And you came from there? Yes, ma'am. And so, describe the scene to us. We protected our water and we did a good job at doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Voices from the standoff at Standing Rock in North Dakota. That report produced with Laura Gottesdiener, John Hamilton, and Dennis Moynihan. For our radio.